Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome to my May front garden tour. I feel like you guys have seen a lot of my garden this month because we had the Pence Gallery garden tour on May 7th. So I kind of did an early May garden tour and now this is more of a late May garden tour. So I will go ahead and I will link that video down below. It was kind of like a quick garden tour. I was just pointing out kind of the new things for you guys. A lot of the new things have grown in on already the garden doesn't look as good as it did that time because obviously I had spent days on end perfecting every inch of my garden and I've kind of relaxed a little bit but this how the garden is right now is more me it's more what I like it's more what I can maintain so I'm excited to show you guys how everything is looking today so let's get started on our walkway up to my front door it is lined in lemon coral sedum there are some points that are looking really good and then some points that are looking really bad and it kind of depends on whether I cut it back or whether it was old from last year and had kind of uh, drifted a little bit you can see this one right here I don't even think this one is getting any water so I might want to replace that one you can see how leggy it is right there so I love lemon coral sedum as my border right here but it is not a plant that you can just completely ignore. It's a plant that you do have to come and you do have to take care of. It is technically an annual from Proven Winners and I push the boundaries with it and I use it as an evergreen perennial but I think of it as more of a short-lived perennial in my garden. Another plant that is looking absolutely gorgeous and matches with my top right now Jason, show everybody my top matching with the Vermillionaire Kufia. I just had to point that out. This one is looking incredible. And I have to be honest with you guys, I haven't even hooked this plant up to drip yet. I have just been so busy with doing a bunch of other things. I've come out and I've supplemented it with water a little bit. So this is Vermillionaire Kufia. It is a hummingbird magnet because of the shape of the blooms. You can see that those hummingbirds are just gonna absolutely love sucking the nectar from those blooms. And I cannot believe how well it is doing in my garden. It is super, super happy. And right behind it, I just did an Instagram post on how good these plants are looking. This is about five Superbina Whiteout. And these are, what would you say, Jason? And like three years old, it, they just look incredible. I do fertilize these plants once a week with the water soluble fertilizer, but it is just a sea of white. And I had a lot of people asking me, do, do the blooms fade? Do they look kind of like brownish as they start fading? And honestly, the answer is no, because the new blooms just come, it's called burying the dead the new blooms just come and cover the old faded blooms so you can't even see it. So this thing will kind of mound up as the season goes on, which I absolutely love it. But this is one of those bang for your buck plants that it is just so incredibly worth it. Um, so let's see, I wanna show you this plant over here, but we're gonna pause really quick cause I cannot remember the name. Oh, Hoopla, that's what it is. <laughs> so these are Proven Winners 2024s. Proven Winners did send me some of the 2024 new introductions to trial out in my garden. And one of them that I planted right before my, my Pence Gallery garden tour was this Superbina Hoopla. It is the coolest plant. I love it. I planted it right next to this purple sweet alyssum. It is eye-catching, absolutely eye-catching. So you cannot get this one in the garden centers this year, but it will be there in the garden centers next year. And I really think this one will be an absolute hit. It is so incredibly beautiful. And I think once my limelight hydrangea starts blooming, probably in late June, July, this whole like Vista is going to look absolutely beautiful. I do want to point out my rock and fuchsia salvia. I, you guys know I talk about this plant all the time. I got this plant off the Lowe's clearance rack for a dollar. It looked like it was dead. It was sticks and some wilted leaves. I planted it. I watered it. It's been coming back. It is the third year now that it's been coming back and it is the happiest plant. I don't take care of it at all. The hummingbirds love it and it's absolutely beautiful and blooms all season long. So that is another one. I live in Northern California zone 9B and that's another Another one that just is absolutely fantastic and I love that plant. 
Jason show them the star jasmine. This is one of my favorite times of the year. Once the star jasmine starts blooming, it is just, it's so pretty. This plant has special meaning for me. I got this plant uh, for Mother's Day in 2020. We planted it for like a Mother's Day fun gardening day. And like, I should have gotten a plaque or something to commemorate that day. Cause it was one of my, I loved that day. It was such a fun day. And every time it blooms, it just brings back really good memories. Cause it, it you know, it blooms pretty close to Mother's Day. And I just absolutely love it. So I am growing this star jasmine. This is one star jasmine that I'm growing up and over the eaves. I do have wire hooked to the eaves. There's hooks and then the wires wrapped around the hooks. So it's not actually growing on the gutters. It's growing on the wire. I do go in and I do trim it to make sure it's not growing up through the eaves. I probably do that maybe once a month, um, but I don't worry about it. I absolutely love it and I think it's gorgeous. So let me take you guys this way. Jason, stand back so I can show them my, my wall of sweet peas. I absolutely love these. I always forget the name of them. It's a, na it's a woman's name. I'll put it on the screen right now. But I planted, I don't know, like 20 sweet pea seeds, little starts. I started them inside um, with the goal of having them grow up so that there was something planted here for the Pence Gallery Garden Tour in early May. And it definitely worked. <laughs> it, it absolutely worked. I love them so much. They smell so good. They're so beautiful. I don't know how long these are going to last for me. As soon as I film this, probably tomorrow, I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna harvest every single flower off of these sweet peas with the goal of having them last as absolutely long as possible. Um, but you know, sweet peas, they don't really like the heat and here we get a lot of heat. So I actually don't have plans for what I'm going to do in this spot. Once these sweet peas are done, I'll have to think about it. But my goal is to have them stay for absolutely as long as possible because I just think they're so beautiful. They're so heavy and they're getting so tall that they're actually falling over <laughs> right here. And I thought, okay, well maybe I'll put some stakes up so they can keep growing but I'm just gonna let them go and I'm just gonna let them do their thing. And if they're gonna fall over, they're gonna fall over, but it's just a, an absolute mass of blooms. And I just, I love it so much. And I think it was so easy because I fall sowed these. I, I think I did it in November or December, which is what you wanna do with sweet peas in our area. If you live in a hot environment, you wanna fall sow sweet peas. So it was, a, it was during a time when I had nothing else to do. I, ha I was pretty, light on gardening chores. So it was just something that I could easily do. And now I have this super, super big uh, bang for your buck uh, amount of sweet peas that really took me absolutely no effort at all. So I love it. It is definitely something I'm gonna repeat. I'll probably switch up the colors every year, which is, which is always fun and exciting. You can see over here, I have my privet, and I know Jason is absolutely dying right now because he does get allergic <laughs> to the privet flowers. This is a Texas privet. You can see all the bees. They're all over on these flowers. It is blooming, so I'm not pruning, pruning them off. Normally, I like to prune this privet into kind of a cone shape or a pyramid shape, but when it blooms, I, I like to let it bloom. Um, Jason's okay with it. <laughs> I offered to cut off the blooms, but he said leave them on for the bees, and literally every single bloom head has a bee on it right now, and it's just, it's just so nice to see. So uh, underneath that, we have the main, I'm pretty sure this is May Night Salvia. Um, I'll put on the screen if it's the wrong, if it's a different one. I want to say Caradonna. It might be Caradonna Salvia. Um, blooming right now. Absolutely beautiful. I will come in and I will deadhead eventually and then it'll send up new bloom stalks or uh, bloom heads, whatever you call it. But it is just, it's so beautiful. And I got the inspiration for these plants from the Pence Gallery Garden Tour, the garden tour that I was in this year, I went on that tour last year and I was at somebody's beautiful garden and they had these all over. And of course, that's where I got the inspiration to put these in. And that's kind of what I love doing. If you have garden tours around your area, it is worth the time to go see the gardens because you can see what plants work really well in your area. I would have never been, you know, I would have never thought about these, this, this particular type of salvia, but now that I see it, I, it's absolutely beautiful and it's gonna be a staple in my garden. All right, come on over this way. 
we'll come down the path and I'll show you guys how my drought tolerant garden is doing. This garden is, it's been a fun one to see how it's been going. Um, all of these plants right here are drought tolerant plants. They all uh, were picked specifically so that they could handle not as much water, right? And so I have um, sun glow, ladybird sun glow calilophus right here. I have a uh, pinkberry blend lantana right here. I have high noon uriop, so it is just loving life right here. I do think there's some slugs attacking this one because um, they're the, like, look at this one right here. You can kind of see they're getting chewed off. The petals are getting chewed off. And I didn't know if it was like birds, but then I did see some like slug trails. So I'm gonna have to come in and put some sluggo. It's kind of a, a funny time of year because it's about to get so hot that I won't need to use sluggo much anymore. So I'm kind of just biding my time until, until they go away, <laughs> until they get too hot for them. And then the last thing I wanna show you is this truffula pink gomfrina. You can see right there with a weed. You can see I haven't weeded in a while <laughs> since the garden tour, but the truffle at pink gonfrina right there is absolutely beautiful. That is just the beginning of that plant. It is going to get absolutely huge. It's gonna love the heat that we're gonna be having over the next couple months, and it's going to be absolutely a showstopper. And I think that mixed with the pink berry blend right here, I think that that is just such a fantastic color match, color combination. I am really, really enjoying it and I can't wait to see how it does over the year. I'm excited about this garden bed because a lot of, a lot of my gardening, I tend to focus on spring. I think about what, you know, like let's get this, let's get the bloom started. You know, I get really excited about it and impatient and I want blooms right away. And I don't really think about how these plants are going to do over the summer. So sometimes as the summer goes on, these plants get kind of tired and they can't really handle the heat. And every single one of these plants were picked out to handle the heat, to handle it long-term. So this is a garden bed that I'm excited to watch and see how it does as the summer heat starts taking over. That is the same with my front annual swoop right behind Jason. This garden bed, I also planted with that in mind, with heat in mind. So I have a Super Tunia Saffron Finch that is looking absolutely beautiful. This is a 2024, it's another 2024. Um, so just keep this in mind for next year. And if you guys are interested in any of these 2024s, Proven Winners always recommends that you let your garden center know in September and October to order these so that they will have them for you guys next year. You can see right here, I have lantana. This is pina colada, luscious lantana pina colada. It is just starting to bloom, but I'm so excited about it because what a perfect match this is. Look at how, like, that's just perfect. I cannot wait to see them blooming together. And then over here, I have this luscious lantana, and this one is called berry blend. And so once this one starts growing up in this annual swoop, this is going to be my pop of pink color. Um, I think it's going to be a break in all the yellow because I definitely wanted to focus on the yellow this year. Um, I would just, I don't know, I'm like really, really into yellow flowers this year. I think they're so pretty. And then this gorgeous, massive thing that is loving its life is Super Tunia Mini Vista Yellow. I mean, I think that this speaks for itself. It is the one that is doing best in the garden bed right now, in this front swoop right now. It is this big, right? And it started off as this big, <laughs> and it's this big already. And it's a mini vista. And you can see it's called a mini vista because it's still super vigorous, but the flowers are very, very little as compared to the Super Tunias. So I think Super Tunia Mini Vista is such a fantastic plant, and I think it's a really good one to depend on. And then finally, just for an accent right here, I do have the Lemon Coral Sedum. It is in full, full hot sun, so it definitely is this beautiful lime green color, and I absolutely love it. Oh, look over here. Look at this one. Look at this Pina Colada. Isn't that pretty? That is gonna look so good once it's all blooming. Ooh, I'm really, really excited about that. Okay, let's go, let's go over here. Let me show you guys this one. This is Homestead Verbena. This is one that I keep showing you guys each month because I want to show you guys 
how good it does, how wonderful it does. It is such a fantastic plant. It has a beautiful purple color to it. It's like this electric purple color. It's called Homestead Verbena. Um, you can, you know, it's kind of like one of those generic plants that you can get at all the garden centers. Ask your, ask your garden center for this one because it is a really, really good variety and it loves the heat, absolutely loves the heat. You can see behind it is my Oklahoma redbud looking beautiful. It's all leafed out. It's exactly what I wanted. I planted that tree last November and I went, oh man, I think it took me two months to decide exactly what tree I wanted to uh, plant right there. And I ended up going with the Oklahoma redbud because it could handle our climate, but then I also I love the leaves. I love these beautiful, beautiful leaves. I think they're so pretty. I love this kind of leaf where it's, you know, it's really soft almost. So I just, I could not be happier with this tree. It's absolutely, it's absolutely beautiful. And I think the bigger it gets, I'm happy with it now. And I think the bigger it gets, the happier I will be. All right, let's come over this way. Oh, here's my Shasta daisies. So these Shasta daisies, I got from Lowe's. They're just like three for 10. I got them on sale three for 10 at Lowe's. They're a perennial for me. I absolutely love them. I'm pretty sure they're the snowdrift variety because they're so low as compared to other Shasta daisies. They're absolutely gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Um, they just start blooming now at this time and I will have to go in and I will have to deadhead them. That's one thing I don't love about Shasta daisies is, you know, I will have to come in and deadhead. You can see like that, um, but that's okay because it's right next to my rose arch, my Eden rose arch that I have to deadhead as well. So at least <laughs> they're all together. That makes that a little bit easier. Jason, come over here. I want to show them this. This is, if you guys remember last year, I had purple hyacinth bean growing up this sign. This is just a road narrow sign. It's nothing, it's not like a stop sign or anything like that. I planted a seed here. I do have irrigation there and it is growing. It's absolutely beautiful. It's going to grow like feet in the next month, I think. I bet you it's so high in the next month and then it'll start wrapping around the sign. Everybody loved it when I did it last year. All the neighbors were stopping by asking what it was and talking about it and they absolutely loved it. So I of course had to do that again next year. All right, so moving on this way, this is my Eden Rose Arch. And I was so lucky because during the Pence Gallery Garden Tour, it was in full new bloom. It was absolutely gorgeous. It is starting to go out of bloom, flush out of bloom right now, but it will come right back. I've been really good about deadheading it. Um, it don't look close because there's a couple more that I have to deadhead, but I think that that's just, that's the nature of it, especially when there are so many blooms on these roses like I could not believe how many blooms I got on these roses and that was my goal for all of them when I planted these roses and when I pruned them and when I trained them I was really going for as many blooms as possible and I think I definitely achieved that so first flush of blooms was absolutely gorgeous look at this one right here absolutely incredibly beautiful um, i'm excited to see how the rest of the season goes with these these are eden climbing roses you can see right behind here i have these bearded iris that i did cut back they are done um, i trans let's see i transplanted these and divided these gosh was it last year or the year before i don't know at max two years and they're so big I have to divide them and transplant them again. Bearded iris are one of those that you need to divide to keep it to keep it blooming really well um, and they just they're just multiplying right now and they're taking over this poor Chinese fringe flower this Laura Peblum you can see they're kind of like growing in through it so I don't want them to start crowding that so I will have to get in here in the fall dig up these tubers and start dividing them a little bit so that they don't start taking over and then coming up here this is kind of my purple and white garden bed underneath my red bud garden bed. Um, this is uh, Supertunia 
snowdrift, excuse me, Supertunia Vista snowdrift. So they are absolutely going to get huge. They're going to get massive. These are some old ranunculus that I have to pull. Um, I planted four of the Supertunia snowdrift and they are just going to grow together. And they're going to get absolutely huge. Then my second layer up, I have Augusta Lavender Heliotrope. I planted these last year in uh, containers and I planted them with Suncredible Sunflowers and that was a huge mistake because the Suncredible Sunflowers love the heat, the Augusta Lavender Heliotrope love the heat and um, they, they, it couldn't compete with the Suncredible Sunflowers. So the Suncredible Sunflowers kind of smashed them down and I could not see how beautiful they were and I was talking to somebody from Proven Winners and they were like, Plant it in the, you know, don't plant it in a pot, plant it in your landscape and see how they do. I bet they totally thrive. And they were absolutely right. They're looking beautiful. It's only May and these are heat loving plants. So they are absolutely going to love their life as soon as it gets hotter. And then right behind here, I have Meteor Shower Verbena, which of course is a heat lover. I love these plants. They're so beautiful. Okay, so this is called, this is a Verbena bonariensis. And one year I did plant Verbena bonariensis, just the generic version, uh, in my garden, kind of over where, like over where I planted the sweet peas. And I do have to say that was a big mistake <laughs> because it is reseeding itself constantly. And I am constantly pulling little seedlings of Verbena bonariensis. It's, they're beautiful. I just don't want them there anymore. So that's why Meteor Shower Verbena is better. These plants are bred to be sterile or close to non, you know, sterile. Um, and so they're not going to reseed themselves if at all or very little compared to the, the regular kind of Verbena bonariensis. So I just wanna let you guys know that just with my experience, I don't think I will ever plant the regular kind anymore just because um, it's kind of just taken over. And if I didn't stay on top of it, it would be a huge problem. But the meteor shower Verbena, I can have that beautiful look and not worry about them reseeding themselves. All right, let me take you over to my hands down favorite garden bed right now and that is my cottage garden bed. I cannot believe how good it looks this year. It is, it is just a showstopper. Okay, so do you wanna do like a quick, just like look at, look at how beautiful this combination of plants is looking right now. I just, I'm obsessed with it. I, I'm kind of sad that it's all the way over here on the side of the house because I don't get a look at it nearly as much as I want to. I just find it absolutely beautiful. So the thing that I did differently in this garden bed this year is I focused on more annuals. Uh, last year I had mainly perennials because I was thinking, oh, I just wanna plant them and not worry about it. But I think the look that I want for the cottage garden bed is that like, like bursting out of it seams look with a whole bunch of blooms and a whole bunch of different colors. And perennials will do that to an extent, but perennials will kind of flush in and out of bloom and annuals will be blooming their heads off all season long. So if you guys are thinking about doing a cottage garden bed, don't forget the annuals. Like, you know, I know it's a pain in the butt to keep coming in and planting them uh, every year, but it's just something you just, you can't, you can't get this look without some annuals. Here in zone 9B, a lot of these plants are perennials. Like I call them annuals, but they are perennials for us, but they will still bloom all season long, which is what I want, which is what I'm going for. So let me show you. First over here, this is our fairy garden. Just like the purple hyacinth bean over on that sign, we grew sweet peas up this sign and it's looking absolutely beautiful. It's kind of hiding the fairy garden, which is making it kind of like a little secret, which the girls are loving and the smell is absolutely amazing. So what I did is I just kind of dotted around uh, some different color annuals. Like I have this whirlwind blue scavola right here, which is just I mean, it is really, really you know, gonna be one of my favorites if it keeps, if it keeps acting like this, I'm really excited about it. Um, and then I have Snow Princess Lobularia behind that. You can see my orange appeal Thumbergia starting to grow up the fence, which is so exciting. I cannot wait for that. Um, over here, I have some Lady Godiva Calendula 
it's, you know, it's kind of late, so they're kind of closing up right now. I do have my, I didn't, I didn't prune these because I wanted to show you guys, but I have my Dr. Alexander Fleming peonies. Look, look at this. Look at how beautiful that is. I am so proud of myself for growing these. <laughs> so um, I did plant peonies uh, two years ago. I planted them from their tubers. These are not the ones that I planted from their tubers. Ooh, I have ants on me. Uh, this one I planted from its tubers and it's not, it's not bloom. It didn't bloom this year. This one I planted an actual plant and it is absolutely blooming this year. So much that I am definitely gonna have to get a peony ring next year because they're obviously flopping over. And I'll be honest, I did not expect them to bloom this much, which is why I didn't do the peony ring because I, I just didn't know it was going to bloom that much. Same thing for my Shirley Temple peony right here. It's already done blooming. I've already cut it back. Um, I got this one as a plant as well. So let's see. I have the uh, A Romance Nemesia pink right here that is doing fantastic. Even with the heat, it is handling it. And I think that that's because this is a west facing garden bed um, and it's really, really liking the morning sun. The plant that I'm not super happy with this year is the Artist Pearl Ageratum or Floss Flower. Um, I think because of the white, you can kind of just see the, the brown on it. Um, so it might be just not totally happy. I've done the blue, the Artist Blue, and the Artist Blue was absolutely incredible. Artist Pearl, I'm not as happy with the performance, at least thus far, but we'll see how it does once it gets a little bit hotter. Okay, and then back here, this was a mistake on my part, but it, you know, it's not a mistake if it's still beautiful. This is Junior Walker Nepeta, and I think I was duped by the name. It's called Junior Walker. It's a variety of Walker's Low Nepeta or Catmint. And uh, 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 Walker's Low, the zone is, it's like four through eight or something, and we are zone 9B. So I thought, okay, well, I don't think I can grow Walker's Low, even though we totally can. Uh, so, but then I found this Junior Walker Catmint, actually at Wintour Gardens um, up in Reading, and they said, oh, this variety grows so well for us with the heat. So I was like, okay, but I thought Junior Walker, so that must mean it, it must be little, right? So I bought, I don't know, nine of them or something, and I planted them all throughout here, and oh my God, they are not junior. <laughs> they are not junior, they're huge. I've been pruning it back over here so that it doesn't come and encroach on the peonies and the nemesia. Um, I'm gonna have to prune it back over here from this limelight hydrangea. You can see I have my sweet peas kind of growing in here. So that whole look of the cottage garden and it bursting from the seams, this is giving that look. This is giving it 100%. But I just think it's so funny because um, this is the second year this Junior Walker is growing and it's not Junior. Don't let the name fool you. It's a beautiful plant. I think it smells amazing, but it is, it is absolutely not Junior. All right, and then coming this way, I have the same, at the same time, I think I planted the same amount of the Junior Walker Nepeta. I planted this pink damask um, Veronica. Beautiful, but you can see nowhere near as vigorous as that Junior Walker Nepeta. Um, but I really like those spiky flowers. I think that they're really pretty. And I think that it's a really, really good combination with this pure white butterfly uh, Marguerite Daisy from Proven Winners. This one's not from Proven Winners. This one is from Proven Winners. Okay, one of the plants I wanted to talk to you guys about, because just earlier today, I noticed um, it's the Cashmere Bouquet Mexican Hydrangea. It's not blooming right now, but I'll put a picture of the bloom uh, on the screen right now. Uh, it, it's a beautiful plant. I've seen it in the Reading Arboretum. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and a lot of people from the South said, oh, be careful with that plant. It completely spreads. And I'm thinking, well, it's not gonna, it's not gonna spread for us. Like we're, we're California, we're dry. Of course it's not gonna spread. But just today I was looking, I've got a new baby right here poking up. So this is the one that I planted. And then here's the new baby right there. There's actually two of them right there. And then I planted one more right here. And then I have two babies back here as well. 
So it definitely spreads. <laughs> so those of you in the South that told me it spreads, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, so I will just watch it. I will just keep pruning it and, and making sure I'm staying on top of it. Uh, but it was, it was kind of a shock for me to see that this morning. Um, you know, I, it was like, what is that? Is that a wheat? No, that's a Mexican hydrangea. It was just, it was just funny, really funny. So I have the Nicotiana right here. This is the Nicotiana Lime Green. I got this one from Annie's Annuals. I love it. This is the second year this is in. Um, so this is one of those perennials that I was talking about last year that I had in here last year. It was really pretty, but it didn't have the bloom power all season long. Um, so this will kind of go out of bloom probably, um, I, don't, I don't know when, maybe a month or two. Um, and then they, it won't really bloom too much for me after that. I think, I don't know, it's like going crazy this year. Um, so we'll see how it does. But I love the lime green Nicotiana against the Stormburst uh, Verbena. Look at that combination. I just think it's so pretty. I am just loving this garden bed so very much. And then over here I have more of the A Romance Nemesia, A Romance Pink Nemesia. You can see this artist pearl floss flower. This one's looking a little bit better. Maybe the one over there is just not that happy. Um, but you, you know, it, you can definitely see the brown and stuff like that. Um, we'll see how it does. We'll see. It's obviously starting, just starting to go because I can see a lot of buds um, coming. But you know, I'm kind of going to be watching that uh, that plant to see if I'm going to I'm going to plant it next year. All right, then my allium collection. I did a whole bunch of different alliums. You can see I've had some bloom and kind of go out of bloom already. Um, some of the shorter ones, this one is like a skinnier one, you know, it's kind of in bloom right now, but then I have these guys. I, I have no idea what these are. They're obviously alliums because they came in an allium mix, but they're not blooming. <laughs> I'm assuming they're going to start blooming any minute, but they actually haven't started blooming. I think that they're incredible. I love them. I love the structure of them. I've just, I, I don't even know what to expect. I don't know what to tell you what these guys, what these are. Like, I, I don't even know, but they're super cool. So we will, <laughs> we will keep watching to see if they start opening up. They look like the shorter alliums that eventually start opening up but they're not opening up. It's been a really, really long time. So we'll see what's going on. I find them extremely interesting. I wish I knew the name of these so I could plant them next year because I just think they are the most interesting architecture. And I, I didn't expect this to give me height right here. And it absolutely did. It's, it's really, really cool. So if anybody knows those, please, please let me know. And then finally, the last thing I want to show you in my cottage garden bed is my obelisk right here. This obelisk is from Kinsman Garden Supply, as is my rose arch. And this is more of that orange appeal Thumbergia. And it's, it's going to take over. Like, I can just tell that it's going to take over. Every day I come out here and it's just getting more and more uh, up the obelisk, which I'm really excited about. I could not decide what to plant in this obelisk. I, you know... I had just I had just confused myself and and trying to think of a more permanent thing so I figured I would do an annual and just kind of see how it does this year and see how I like it and so far I'm really really very happy with it. Okay let's make our way through the gated garden bed. This garden bed is looking really really good these days. I'm excited to show you guys. First off I want to point out my star jasmine growing up on this fence right here. It is in full bloom. It smells delicious. I usually like this star jasmine to kind of enclose this gated garden bed area. I obviously don't need it as much this year because I have the sweet peas but I still really, really enjoy it and it's evergreen. It was struggling a little bit last year, um, but it's doing much better and I think it's because it wasn't getting enough water. So I have a lot of people ask me like, um, you know, my leaves are turning brown or, you know, they're, they're turning red and usually it's water that, you know, it really, really likes a lot of water. You need to make sure it stays nice and hydrated. I love this plant because it's actually one of the few plants that I have taken with me. I actually had this plant in a pot in my rental house before we bought this house. So I brought this plant with me in a pot um, and I'm, I'm just so happy that it survived and it's growing. It's like quadrupled in size now at this point. Um, and I just, I just think that that's absolutely the perfect place for it. And I like how it's kind of mimics the other star jasmine that's growing on the house over there. So then on either side of my pathway, I have 
two different varieties of Supertunia Mini Vistas. I have Super, Supertunia Mini Vista Scarlet, which is new for 2023. That's the beautiful red one. I love this color. It's called a red, but I think Scarlet is a really way, good way to describe it because it's more of like this pinky red. It's really, really hard to describe, but it's absolutely beautiful and it's performing really, really well in my garden these days. Right next to it is a new one for 2024 that is called Supertunia Mini Vista Ultramarine. And I have to say, I think the Ultramarine is performing just as well as the Supertunia Mini Vista Yellow. I love the color. Um, the old blooms do kind of fade, kind of like the Supertunia Mini Vista Indigo, the, the, those blooms do. I find it very interesting and I can kind of look out the window and see these out here and I just kind of smile because I'm just so happy with how well they're doing. Um, so I really like the alternating colors right here. This was inspired by Tracy. Um, from Plaid and Poppies on Instagram. Um, she absolutely loves color and so she inspired me to try a little bit more color in my garden, not be so stuck on like pinks and purples and all that kind of stuff, but maybe try something like a scarlet and I'm so happy I did because it just makes this whole garden bed really, really fun. I do want to point out this plant right here that's come into full bloom. This is hands down my favorite plant in the entire garden. You guys know I always talk about this. This is called Mystic Spires Blue Salvia. It is the best plant. So if you go, if you're a new gardener and you can go you go get yourself Supertunia Mini Vista Bubblegum and some Mystic Spires Blue Salvia, you will be so proud of yourself. <laughs> you will be so happy. This plant starts blooming and it doesn't stop until you cut it down because you're sick of seeing it at the end of the season. It's absolutely beautiful. You can see how many buds I have on here. And remember, this is a perennial. This is not an annual. So, so perennials often don't bloom all season long, but this one absolutely does. I really think it's a special plant. Um, I'm so glad I found it. And uh, there, there is a new version of it. It's called Misty, M-Y-S-T-Y. And it's just like a shorter squatter version to be able to put in more spots. And I saw it in the garden center last year one time and I didn't grab it. And I don't know why I didn't grab it. I should have grabbed it. I wish I did. So that's my goal. Every time I go to the garden center, I look for misty spires. So if you guys live in the Sacramento area and you see it at a garden center, please tell me because that's that's been on my plant wish list. I wanna see how it does as compared to the mystic spires blue salvia. So let me show you guys over here, my surefire rose begonia. This is fast becoming one of my top plants. It just performs so well. <laughs> like I, I don't know what to say. This is a very tough garden bed for me because it, it, the sun comes in, it's about half sun, half shade, and it kind of changes throughout the season as the sun gets higher in the sky. So I kind of never really know what to plant in this garden bed. And I think that Surefire Rose Begonia, it kind of just solves all those problems. It can handle the sun, it can handle the shade, it blooms beautifully all season long. I have four of them that are left over from last year. They're actually on their third year now at this time. And you can't even tell the difference between those and between the new ones that I just planted this year. So, you know, if you live in my zone, uh, it's gonna be a perennial for you, but it is absolutely such a fantastic plant. I do have ladies mantle right here, which I, I'm kind of pushing the boundaries with it. Um, I think it likes a little bit cooler temperatures, but it's, it's so far it's doing really, really well. Um, and, and it looks like it's actually about to start flowering. I wanna take you back here one second. Tiny tough stuff, the sun is totally in my eyes. Tiny tough stuff, hydrangea. I have not put any acidifier on it this year at all and it's still blue. You can see there are some like kind of pink a little bit right there but this one this tiny tough stuff is known for being the easiest one to turn blue and we have neutral to slightly alkaline soil but I was just so shocked to see it start coming out in the blue color. I think it's beautiful. I love this hydrangea. And then right behind it, I do have the Limelight Primes, which um, I, I think are gonna do really, really well this year. I'm excited to see it. And then let me just point out my uh, hostas. They are looking really good this year. This one, God, it's like called Francis something. 
I cannot remember. I can never remember. I don't remember this one either, but it's really pretty. I love it. And these, I think these are second year hostas, maybe third. I'm, I'm terrible. I need to write that down. I cannot ever remember. Let me take you over this way to my shade window box that is looking absolutely fantastic. First, come through my star jasmine. Look, isn't that pretty? It's just so beautiful. I just love it. It's so beautiful and it smells so good. So I did two window boxes. I did a shade one and then I did a, a full sun one. So this is my shade one. I will show you guys my full sun one in my backyard garden tour because it's on the side, the other side of my house. Um, but this one is doing absolutely gorgeous. This is hippo pink polka dot plant. This is like, I just had a friend give me an indoor plant and it was this one. I planted in my friend Jessica's indoor garden, a bunch of these, and they are thriving outside in this area right here. They are just so incredibly happy. They've doubled in size. They're absolutely gorgeous. Under that, I have the um, mini me watermelon plectranthus or hosta uh, um, coleus. Really, really interesting. The leaves are like really small and thin. Um, they're, it's just the most interesting coleus that I've seen. I think it's a really, really good um, uh, kind of uh, contrast compared to these leaves that are kind of like showstoppers. Okay, and then finally, the last flower that I have in this window box is Diamond Snow Euphorbia. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is so pretty and I'm actually really impressed with this plant because this plant is rated part sun to full sun and this is obviously a full shade window box. It gets a little bit of morning sun. I was worried about it not getting enough sun and it obviously is doing absolutely fantastic. Um, I was talking to someone from Proven Winners who said they thought I could push it just based on our heat and the fact that it did get some morning sun and they were absolutely right. It's not getting leggy it's still blooming it's absolutely beautiful and i just love that combination with the hippo pink right there underneath there this is kind of like my green shade garden i do have some ostrich ferns right here that are doing beautiful some hostas that are actually blooming and i have to say i do love the blooms on them i think that they're so pretty and it is absolutely so fun to see them bloom because you know that they're happy right um, and then over here, just as a quick look, I do have the container that I did uh, from Wintour Gardens. I planted up this container um, when I was doing my presentation and then they gifted me with this container, which is fabulous. You can see that these supertunias are not getting enough sun, so I have to put them in the sun so that they can kind of green up a little bit, but it's doing it very happy. And then finally, I did find at Wintour Gardens, pufferfish hydrangea. I don't know where I'm gonna put this, but when I saw it, I was like, uh, yeah, I have to get it. This is one of the new panicle hydrangeas and panicle hydrangeas do really, really well in our zone, in our heat. So I don't know where I'm gonna put this, but I'm definitely gonna find a place. I will film it for you guys. I'm just, I'm so very excited about that plant. I was so happy to find it at the garden center. All right, I have more to show you. Let me take you guys over to the crepe myrtle garden bed. It's looking beautiful right now. And then also I wanna show you the cut flower garden. Okay, so here's the crepe myrtle garden bed. It's looking beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I have my heliotrope right here that's pretty happy. I think this heliotrope probably wants a little bit more sun, um, but I think it'll be able to handle itself here. I think it's really, really happy and it smells so good. I do have to say I found somebody on Instagram showed me a company in, I want to say it's in Louisiana. It's called Hove or H O it's H O V E and they make heliotrope perfume and heliotrope candles. So of course I gifted myself for mother's day. I'll say my family gifted me for mother's day, a heliotrope candle and heliotrope perfume and it smells divine. It smells so incredibly beautiful and I love it. Um, my neighbors who, uh, whose mothers passed away and their mothers had a whole bunch of plants in their garden, including the peonies that I have, my Bartzella peony, they also gave me a pot with a geranium in it. And it was this really shallow pot and the geranium, like, you know, you could tell that it wasn't very happy. I thought it was gonna die. Last minute, I transplanted it over to this garden bed right before the, um, 
the garden tour and look at this geranium. I don't know the variety. It's just, it is absolutely beautiful. I do need to deadhead it a little bit, but you guys can kind of get the idea how beautiful it is. And it just needed to get out of that pot. And then all of a sudden it went crazy blooming, absolutely crazy. So it's beautiful. I think it is going to stay there. I love it right there. And I love it just across the walkway is the purple heliotrope. So it has the purple heliotrope and the pink geranium right there. And I just think it's so very pretty. And then right down here, I have my white geranium that's starting to grow. Another one that I'm sorry, I can't tell you guys the variety. I do not know the variety. Um, I got them on the clearance rack <laughs> again, and I didn't write down the variety, um, but yeah. Okay, so I want to show you guys my angel wing Senecio. So it's really interesting. By the end of the day, they're thirsty, right? They're really, really thirsty, which was interesting to me because I was trying to withhold a lot of water, but I might be withholding it a little too much. So by the end of the day, I look at them and they're kind of wilted a little bit like that. I do not supplement them with water because I don't want them to trick me and make me think that they need more water, but then when they get watered in the morning, they pop back up and they're absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna keep watching them and see how they do. They're obviously so very happy, um, but by this time of day, I notice, especially this one, I notice a little bit of wilting, but again, I don't wanna overcompensate and overwater because these guys are known for kind of drowning, um, you know, just getting overwatered and then dying. So I'm trying really hard not to overwater them and still kind of restrict the water. And and, and force them to spread their root system out um, and get, basically get used to the amount of water that I'm offering them. So kind of torturing them a little bit, but that's okay. So I have another Mystic Spires Salvia here, Mystic Spires Blue Salvia. This one is obviously significantly more shade than the one I have over there. And it is still happy as a clam. I like it's blooming just as much as the other one. Um, I just, I just love this plant. It's just one of those great plants, you know, that you, you really can't go wrong with it. It's absolutely wonderful. Over here, I have Creeping Jenny. And then in between it, I have Supertunia Blue Skies. Supertunia blue skies, at least in my zone, my zone 9B, I think Supertunia blue skies likes the shade a little bit better because when it has a lot of sun, it tends to kind of bleach out. Like you can see this one right here. It starts to bleach out and I don't like how it bleaches out a little bit. I like it to stay a little bit more dark like this one. Sorry, Jason, I'm switching on you. Um, I like it to stay a little bit more dark like this one. So I tend to try and put the Supertunia Blue Skies in a little bit more shade. Last year I had it in my backyard on a north facing fence where it got a ton of shade and it was the most beautiful I've ever seen it. This does get some evening sun. So I think it is bleaching out a little bit, but I think it is still beautiful. And to have underneath, to have the Creeping Jenny underneath it, I think is I just think that that was the right choice. I'm absolutely loving it. And then I can still see my landscape rock right there, which is very, very happy. So I did want to talk to you guys a little bit about my, um, my fox gloves. You can see my mess of fox gloves right there. They're not looking very good. And I had a couple people ask me like, why was I cutting? Why was I deadheading them if they're biannuals and they've already bloomed this year? Aren't they done? Aren't they just going to die? And my answer to that is no, because I grow Camelot mix fox gloves. So all the fox gloves that I have in here, save for a couple of like the apricot ones, um, are Camelot mix, which bloom first year. And so I get the blooms first year. So even if they're biannuals, they're still going to bloom next year, maybe not as vigorous, but they're definitely going to still bloom next year. And then I've talked to a lot of you that have said that your foxgloves in our zone, you know, if you have um, Camelot mix variety or a first year blooming variety, they will last for more than just two years. So that's why I don't pull them out and I just deadhead them even after they've been blooming um, because I'm just betting on that they're gonna bloom again. And a lot of these plants have bloomed before. And then I, also, I, I put new ones in, let me show you these over here. 
These seedlings are new for this year, so they're kind of a little bit further behind. They're just starting to bloom this year. Um, and then, you know, so this is the first year that these guys are in and they are still blooming. So Camelot mix foxgloves, I think that there's a couple different varieties of the foxgloves that will kind of act in this similar manner. Um, but I just wanted to explain that for you guys because I got a lot of questions about that, about foxgloves being biennials. I love the Camelot mix. I think it's so pretty and I love the color. Then I have my Lamium that's blooming its head off. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I do have a couple hostas interspersed and they're, they're not as happy right here. I think they get too much sun right there, um, but that's okay. This Lamium, this Lamium I have a love-hate relationship with because as it gets hotter, um, it does tend to scorch a little bit for me, but this time of year it's so happy, so I don't want to take it out. So we're just going to leave it and then I'll debate on it <laughs> once it gets hotter in the season and it starts scorching and then I'll start debating with you guys about it. Um, but yeah, so I'm really happy with how everything looks in the crepe myrtle garden bed. The crepe myrtle tree is not blooming yet. It will probably bloom late June to July, um, but it just, it's all flushed out and it looks absolutely beautiful. I love it. I love how this garden bed has turned out. I love how it kind of has layers to it and it kind of, um, changes with the seasons i guess is what i'll say i i just i love this garden bed i think it's perfect um so yeah so let me show you guys my um my cut flower garden this cut flower garden i purposely planted these flowers to be cut and come again flowers um i love cut and come again flowers so basically a cut and come again flower is a cut flower that you grow and then you the more you cut off of it the more it will bloom for you so it's like it's fantastic because you can just keep cutting these and it will it will just keep coming all season long so every single flower that i have in here right now is a cut and come again flower i have some gone Frina right here that's starting to grow. I have some straw flower. I have a whole bunch of different zinnias that are really starting to get big. Um, looking, it's just, it's looking really good. I'm so happy with it. Don't look at the weeds. I obviously haven't been out here <laughs> weeding very much. Um, I do have some Ami over here on this side. Ami I'm going to use as a uh, filler. It's this beautiful white flower. It's kind of, it's a uh, false Queen Anne's lace looks really oh there's a come over here Jason there's a ladybug oh that is the cutest thing I want to take a picture of that can you guys see that oh I love it so pretty so these reseed themselves prolifically so just be prepared if you plant white dill on me it definitely reseeds itself but you know what it is what it is we have to enjoy ourselves. I did get a sunflower reseeding itself and I am absolutely gonna leave it there because I think it'll be pretty. And I'm planning to sow a whole bunch of sunflowers right here as my uh, elegance watermelon sweet peas start fading at, with the heat. Um, like I think I already said this to you guys, but tomorrow I am gonna come through and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, harvest everything, absolutely everything. I've been waiting to film this garden tour because I wanted you guys to see all these gorgeous blooms. They look absolutely beautiful, but to keep everything blooming, you need to keep harvesting for all these cut and come again flowers. If you want them to keep coming again, you have to continually harvest them because if you allow the plant to go through its full life cycle and produce seed then the plant is going to think, well, I done my job. I don't have to do it anymore. And, and it will just stop blooming for you. So I, you know, I've talked about this a little bit more in my deadheading, um, my deadheading video, but basically you want to stop the plant from completing its life cycle if you want it to keep blooming all season long. So I can see right here, I, I already see some sweet pea seeds forming. So I have to, I have to get out here early tomorrow morning, which that will be a lovely day as I deadhead everything. And then you can see I have my afternoon white Cosmo. I have to come and deadhead these as well. So you guys can see I've been I, Jason and I, and my girls, honestly, we did so much work for the Pence Gallery Garden Tour. My garden looked absolutely the best it's ever looked. But again, I was telling everybody when they were coming to see the garden, you know, I was saying it doesn't always look like this. You know, don't, don't compare your garden to what, you know, I've been working on for five months now, making it look as perfect as possible. So what you guys are seeing now is more of what my garden looks like 
on, on a regular basis. You know, I do have weeds, I have things that I need to deadhead, but I kind of think of that as like a real life garden, a garden that someone lives in, a gardener that maybe has other things going on and that's perfectly fine. Um, but I just, you know, don't feel bad if you see a garden and it's absolutely perfect because most likely that gardener has worked their butts off for five months to make it look like that. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, you know, for these garden tours, I will kind of tidy things up a little bit and we'll blow things, but I'm not going to go around and I'm not going to deadhead and weed everything because I want you guys to see exactly what it really looks like. May, end of May, uh, my front garden tour. So we will film our back garden tour, the May back garden tour, and that should be out hopefully tomorrow. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.